Hi, and thanks for tuning in to my video blog for polyphonic.org. Last time I talked about some of the differences between band and orchestra libraries, one of the major differences being the volume of material that a band library has to produce per concert because our pieces tend to be shorter than orchestral pieces. Um, by this vein, athletic bands is just a world's away from an orchestra because the pieces are not 5 to 20 minutes long, but more like at maximum five minutes. Um, the music comes to us printed on um, regular size paper that uh, has two march size, which is five by seven inches, ideally, um, music. It looks something like this. Now this one's a little smaller because the print is just a bit um, smaller than the margins that I'd like. It's, it's a constant um, educational opportunity to ask arrangers to send us music um, in formats that we can work easily with, that also the musicians can read easily. Um, so when the music is sent to us, or if we purchase it, it's purchased, usually they're printed these days, um, two up with the five by seven inches on one regular sheet of paper that gets cut in half. Um, but a lot of times arrangers are emailing us PDFs and um, hopefully they're sending them to us in five by 11 landscape size, which we can shrink down very easily, or they're sending them two up, or they're sending them five by seven on one eight and a half by 11 format, um, them, which we can then print out and then copy twice. Uh, this all sounds like a lot of gibberish, I'm sure, but the reason we have to cut down the music to five by seven, which is also known as March size, is so that they can be placed into the flip folders, which look like these, and they are attached to um, the instruments via a lyre, which I don't have because those come with the instruments which are not kept here. Um, in our basketball band, um, we have created books of music that are March size, like this. And um, the music is inside, and they can flip, and it's in alphabetical order. I'm sorry, these are all going to show up backwards on the screen. Um, and if any music is added to it, then what, what the kids do is they attach the folders to the, the books to the flip folders, and then if any new pieces are added, then they get sleeves um, with the music that's just added on. As far as I know, I'm the only per performance librarian full-time um, that handles athletic music. Um, when I ask my colleagues if they ever have to work with it, the consensus is no, and that the music is handled by graduate students or student staff. Um, but between me and all three of you that ever watch this, I'm in the process of figuring out if that fact is entirely true. Um, I kind of feel like there must be another librarian out there that also works full-time with this and is being as stingy about the parts I'm receiving as I am. Um, I'm always looking for ways to reduce the waste that athletic bands creates to it only takes one windy day on the football field to create about 10 to 20 parts that need to be printed or recopied again. Um, everyone I've discussed this with, though, has said that um, it's fairly normal that all this paper gets used um, and it's just what comes with the territory, but I keep thinking there must be something that we're all missing. Um, admittedly, athletic bands are a very foreign land to me. I'm slowly figuring it out. I'm getting better at it. Um, but because I never marched in marching band as a violinist, um, this culture is still just a bit new and I'm glad that I'm at the point where I can figure out the needs a little better of the students, um, but it's still a bit mysterious to me. Um, and the people in it seem to have so much fun, though. I think that's the really rewarding part of it. And I, again, I'm not sure what in classical music can compare to the scale and the scope of athletics bands or their music preparation. Um, and side note, don't you think that the NFL would, should have marching bands for per team? Like right now, there's only two marching bands in the NFL, which belong to the Baltimore Ravens and the Washington, whatever they're going to be called next. Um, but both of these marching bands are only volunteer groups. And uh, the thing is, these bands, when you watch the games, they seem to adhere to that same sense of tradition and pride that exists in our marching band and that um, the marching band promotes and is upholding. And it just seems to create this unique sense of team loyalty um, and pride that's just really cool to watch and I think only comes with having an athletic band back there like supporting you. Um, it would also create jobs too, but anyway. So basically <laughs> marching band, um, athletic bands, basketball bands, 
pet bands, basically all these, um, the volume becomes just so much greater and scarier uh, when it comes to their preparation, especially here at University of Illinois, where our marching band is about 300 people strong. Um, each season, the band performs about 115 pieces of music, which means that if every person gets one piece of paper per piece, that's about 34,500 pieces of 5 by 7 paper. Um, and of course, if it's doubled up, that's uh, ideal, and it cuts down the number a little bit. But again, when so much music gets lost on the field because this music just blows away, that pretty much evens out. Um, What's even more mind-blowing is that there are actually a lot of pieces um, that have two or three pieces of paper. So maybe maybe it is 34,500, even if we do two up. Um, there are a couple of marching bands out there that have been trying to offset the volume of paper um, that gets used uh, by using tablets instead. But personally, I think it's a different kind of cost um, in buying the equipment, the licensing, the software. Um, there might be something new in the copyrights, and we don't do it here, so it, it's a new field. Um, and also probably ensuring the tablets and then all, keeping all these tablets and software updated. And it's um, not new technology anymore, really, but it's a new use for it. And it seems to have been pretty successful for the groups that are using it, but it's also a little too early to tell, I think. Um, I'm interested. I'm very curious to see how it'll all work out, though, and what challenges they'll run into, if any. Um, and who knows, maybe one day we'll be doing it, too. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me and hope to see you next time.